again, my little yarnivores and spiderettes. Fiber Spider back again with another tutorial for you. And today we're going to be doing the circle in a square motif. Very easy, a lot of fun. And also I'm going to be showing you the join as you go technique to make it even more easy. All right, so let's go over a few stuffs. All right, so for this particular project, I used Stylecraft Special Double Knit Yarn. This was given to me by a viewer. Thank you so very much. I appreciate it. This yarn was actually part of a collection by Ophelia Talks, and it had so many great fall autumn colors. I believe this was called Fall or Autumn Walk. I can't remember. I'm sorry, but I'm going to put a link to that website in the description box down below. Don't know if it's still available, but hey, the yarn is. So it is 100% acrylic and it is 322 yards. Really soft, really enjoyed making this project. So as you can see, it's got some really awesome colors going on here. And today we're gonna to be making two more squares to add to this scarf because I want to show you just how easy it is to do the join as you go method. Now this is a weight of three yarn so I'm going to be using a size H five millimeter hook. You can of course use whatever works for you, whatever yarn, whatever hook size. Now if you want to do a stash buster which is a great way of going through your odds and ends of yarn, just make sure that the weight and material are consistent. Okay, so with that being said, let's get started. Okay, round one, starting with a slip knot as per usual, and a chaining up of three. Now we're going to be working in a circle. So there are a number of different ways that you could go about this, say by chaining four, doing a slip stitch to the first chain to create a ring, do a magic ring. You know, there's a lot of different ways. Personally, I find that this is going to work out just fine. So the, the first chain, we are going to be doing all of our stitches into that first chain, the chaining up of two does not count as a double crochet. It's just to give us the height. So in that first chain, 12 double crochets. And of course, if you have a preferred method, by all means, go right ahead. I will not take it personally. We all do things differently. This is just how it, you know, worked out best for me personally. So let's see, two, four, six, seven. Okay. Eight, nine, 10, 11 and 12 double crochets and then finish off by doing a slip stitch into the top of that first double crochet. Slip stitch right into there and you can cinch up your tail and there you go. That is the first round. Alrighty. Okay, round two. I'm going to start by chaining up two. And again, this does not count as a double crochet. It's just to give us the height. So into this first stitch, two double crochets. And into every stitch for the round, two double crochets. So we're going from 12 
to 24 stitches all the way around. We're just doubling all of our stitches. It's really that easy. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the rest of these off camera, just do two doubles into each double. And then when you get all the way around, this here is going to be your last stitch where you work two doubles and then slip stitch into the top of your first double slip stitch. And then that will be the end of round two. Now, I do find it advisable to count your stitches after each round, just to be sure, because the count is very, very important. All right, so I will meet back up with you for round three. Okay, so round three is actually going to be the last round of working as a circle. And again, start by chaining up two into that first stitch two double crochets into the next stitch, one double crochet. So it's one, two, three. Then in the next two double crochets. So it's one and two, and then one double crochet into the next stitch. So how I always like to look at these sort of increases is that it's one, two, three, one, two, three, gets to be sort of rhythmic. And so that's what you're going to do for the rest of round three, going from 24 double crochet stitches to 36 double crochet stitches. And then at the end of this round, again, back here, all right, so it would be one, two, three, and then slip stitch into the top of that first double crochet right there, and that will be the end of round three. Now at this point, after finishing the round, you're going to want to sew in your ends because it'll make it a lot easier in the long run. And then we can continue on by squaring off the circle. All right. So I will meet back up with you when I'm done with my circle and sewing in my ends, and then we will go on to the next step. All right. I'll see you in a bit. Okay. So round four, we are going to be switching gears with a new color of yarn. And what I find to be the most helpful is finding the spot where you first started. See, that was my chaining up of two, and then my two double crochets, my one double crochet. I just find that this works better uh, because you could inadvertently think that this chain two is a double crochet, whereas it's not. I'm not trying to be confusing. I am trying to be helpful, believe it or not. <laughs> so... If you start with this double crochet, the first real double crochet that we did in this round, I find that that works best. Okay. Now, grabbing your new tail of yarn, pulling up a loop, and then chaining three. One, two, three. Now, yes, it's a real double crochet. Okay. So into that same stitch, do another double crochet, chain two, and two more double crochets into that same stitch. Now this is going to create a corner. And you're probably thinking to yourself, how is that going to create a corner? Well, that is where the different sizes of stitches come into play. They will shrink near the top and grow near the corners. This will make more sense as we go on. So we've got two doubles, chain two, two doubles in that same stitch. Next stitch, one double crochet. And then we're going to be following a bit of a repeat. So it's going to be in the next two stitches, half 
double crochets. So you yarn over, pull up a loop, pull through all three, half double into the next stitch, pull up a loop, pull through all three, then two single crochet stitches. Single and single. So it shrinks down. Now we have to go back up again. So two half double crochets, one and two, then a double crochet. And we reached the corner again. So into the corner, two doubles, into that same stitch, chain two, two more doubles into that same stitch. Okay, so we've got one side completed. So I'm gonna do the other three sides. So into the next stitch, double, then two half doubles, then two singles, then two half doubles, and a double. Then we reach the corner, so two doubles, chain two, two doubles, all in that same stitch. Okay, next stitch, one double, and then shrinking down, two half doubles, one, and two, two singles, one, two, Going back up, two half doubles, one, two, a double, okay, and then the corner again. So into that stitch, two doubles, chain two, two doubles. There we are, and we've got one more side to go. I told you this goes fast. I kid you not. Okay, so for this last side, into the next stitch, double crochet, then two half doubles, then two singles, two half doubles, and then one double. Okay, now to finish up the round, slip stitch into the first double, There we go. And then just slip stitch into the next stitch and slip stitch into the corner chain space. And there you go. All right, so next round, we're going to flesh this out just a little bit more with one more round, and that will be the motif. So be right back with round five. Okay, last round for the motif, round five. We're starting in the, the corner chain space, so chain up three, double crochet into the chain space. So we've got two doubles, chain two, two more doubles into that same corner space. 
There we go. And then do a double crochet for each stitch all the way across, regardless of whether it's a double crochet or a half double or a single, just double crochets all the way across. It's really that easy. Now, what I would strongly suggest, something that I did not necessarily do myself for most of my scarf project, is sew in your ends as you go. Yes, I would strongly recommend that because it will make the ordeal of sewing in the ends later a lot less painful. Yeah. Also, it'll make working up your project that much easier because you won't have all of these tail ends going flippy floppy all over the place as you're trying to join on new squares. Okay, so did all of my doubles across this edge. Then when you reach the chain two space once again, do two doubles, chain two, and two doubles in that chain space. And then from here, do the exact same thing with the remainder of the sides of the square. So from here, it would be doing double crochets all the way across in your corner, two doubles, chain two, two doubles, double crochet all the way across in the corner space, two doubles, chain two, two doubles, double crochet all the way across. Now, don't forget that we started in the corner chain space, so don't forget you need to do a double crochet in this double crochet and in this double crochet. It can be a little bit fiddly because we did slip stitches, but you can get in there. You're just going in to this stitch right here and the one right next to it, which I will actually show you right here. Just going into that stitch like that with a double crochet and then eventually slip stitch to the top of your first double crochet, slip stitch into that stitch, and then you'll be done with your first motif. Now I'm not going to finish this motif because with this motif, I wanna show you how you can join this motif to other motifs so that you can do the join as you go technique, okay? But that is how you would finish up an entire first motif. Once you have your first one done, and you're ready to attach another one. Well, that's about what I'm that's what I'm going to show you to do. Alrighty. So, let's get to it. Okay, so when you are ready to join your working square to your previously existing squares, I'm going to show you what to do. So, now what I did was I did two sides because we're going to join this top side here and then I'll be able to finish this last remaining side by doing my slip stitch join to my first double crochet there. Now, what I did was I stopped after doing two double crochets in my chain space because this is the point where we're going to then do our two chains, two double crochets into this corner. However, I didn't do the chains yet because it's two chains, right? Well, the first chain we're actually going to do. The second chain is going to be a slip stitch join. It's all about doing a, a stitch and a join, a stitch and a join, a stitch and a join. It's all about things being even and having a sense of equilibrium throughout the piece. So do one chain, then the next stitch actually is going to be a, a slip stitch into that corner chain space of the pre-existing square. And we're gonna go back and forth between doing double crochets, slip stitch, 
double crochet, slip stitch, double crochet, slip stitch, all the way across this edge. So, going to do a slip stitch. So, now this is the, the right side. So, going around from the back to the front, slip stitch. There we go. Now we need two double crochets into this chain space. So double crochet. And then slip stitch to that first double up top. And then another double into the chain space. Slip stitch into the next double up top. So we did our two doubles in that chain space. So now we're going to be doing double crochets in these stitches down here. So double crochet into that first double. Slip stitch up top. Double crochet down below. Slip stitch up top. Double down below. Slip up top. Double down below. Slip up top, and so on and so forth, all the way across this edge. And it does take a little bit of practice, but personally, I found that it really, really is worthwhile because it makes the process so much easier, especially if you are not fond of sewing motifs together, which personally, I am not. <laughs> I'm really not a fan of that. I used to, when I first started with motif projects, specifically the traditional open granny squares, and I hated it. Because then, yes, you have more ends to sew in, and it was just, ugh. It was not a fun time for me. But we learn new techniques and we go from there. So we are almost to the end of the row. So I figure I'll just keep going here. Okay, and I missed that one. Hang on. There we go. And you're probably thinking, wait a minute, you've got, you're out of stitches at the bottom, but you've got a whole bunch up top. Well, that's because we still have to do those two doubles in the chain space down below. That's why. So, do the stitch in the corner space and then slip up top another double down below in that corner space and slip up top there we go so then slip stitch into the corner space of the one up top. And then we're going to continue working across this side. Now, as you can see, we got ourselves a nice even join. 
It is a thing of beauty. I love it. All right, so then from here, you would just continue right along this edge as you normally would. So we did our join into the corner, so then chain one, and then into the corner space, two doubles. And then just double crochet into each stitch across until you reach the end. And then your, your slip stitch join to that first double crochet. Okay, got two more to go. And getting into the stitches, like I said before, that you did your slip stitches, yeah, it's a little bit tight, but it is workable. Just try not to have a, a death grip when doing those slip stitches to your corner space, and you should work out just fine. So then slip stitch into that top corner. Do, do, do. Shaboom. And you are done with your motif. So then, of course, you can cut your yarn, pull out the loop, and sew in your ends like a good little yarnivore so that you don't have to deal with that later. All right, we have yet another motif added on to this gorgeous scarf. So the next one I'm going to show you is how to do your corner. It's really nothing different than what we just did, but when you reach this corner, you're probably going to be like a deer in the headlights. That's okay. I will show you how you can deal with that corner and not have to worry. Okay, I'll be right back. Okay, so now we're going to deal with corners, filling in the gaps, right? Well, okay, so we just created a corner, and with this one, I only did one side because the second side, well, it has to be completely clear so that I can join it to the previous work. So again, I only did two doubles into that corner, still have to chain one though because the second chain is going to be the slip stitch join to this corner here. So I got I got this crazy long scarf here so bear with me. I'm working on it here. I'm working on it. All right so now I'm going to be joining into this corner here and then we're going to work our way across do our join in the corner and then work our way down. So first things first, I did my two doubles, chain one into that corner space. So slip stitch into this corner here, like so, there you go. And then double crochet into the existing corner and slip stitch up top. Double crochet down below. Slip stitch up top. Okay, now we did our two doubles in the corner. So it's double crochets into the actual stitches going all the way across. So then slip stitch up top, double crochet down below, slip up top, double down below. And so I'm going to do the majority of 
this edge off camera because it's really the same thing. And when I get to approximately the corner, I'm going to show you how we can deal with that so it's nice and even. All right, I'll be right back. Okie dokie, so I worked my way across and I'm at the point where I still need to do two more doubles in the chain space, slipping to the top there, and then into the corners here. All right, so double down below, slip up top. Double down below, slip up top. Oh, come on, you can do it. There we go. All right, so now we're at the, all right, where do we chain? Where do we slip into? All right, well, we have, technically, we have three corners to work in, sort of. Well, we've got this corner, this corner, and this corner. What I found works best, this is just personal preference, of course, is to slip stitch into the, the square that we've been working into, this green one. So slip into that corner, and then slip into the corner of the, the one that we will be working into, disregard the one that is catty corner. Okay, so slip into the corner of this one, this green one here on the side that we did previously. And then, turning my work here, we can then proceed to do our double crochet down below. and then slip into the first double up top on this side. So it's really painless once you get the hang of it. Double down below into that same corner, and then slip up top. And so we did our two in the corner, so we're now actually gonna work into the stitches down below. and then slip up top. Double down below. Slip up top. Double down below. Slip up top, and so on and so forth. So, uh, you know what? Let's just let's just keep going. Seriously, I I love spending with time with you guys, and I like being thorough. And why not? So this is really all there is to it. I just find all of this to be so calming and therapeutic and I just I love stitching so much and these colors oh they really lent themselves to that feeling because this is seriously this is my favorite time of year the leaves are going to start turning colors and there's that smell of burning wood fires at night and it gets nice and chilly and I just you know I mean if you if you like pumpkin spice coffee more power to you but no I just I like going outside and just smelling the autumn air that alone just gives me waves of nostalgia And a lot of people, they don't like how it gets dark out earlier. Me, I don't mind because I'm pretty much nocturnal as it is. 
Okay. There we go. And then don't forget your two new ones in the corner there. So double down below, slip up top, double down below. So that's two in the corner there. Slip up top. There we are. And then after doing that, slip into that corner chain space, chain one, and then finish up your last edge with two doubles into that corner space, and then double crochet your way all the way across until you reach the end of that last edge, and you can do your slip stitch join. Now also I found that it's easiest if you make a strip of your squares, you know, the, the length or the width of your project, and then you build off of that with a second tier and a third tier and so on and so forth. Personally, I find that that is a, a nice way of going about it. Um, as opposed to starting with, you know, one square and then building squares off of that squares in sort of a higgledy-piggledy fashion, um, I think that this has a more uh, concerted look about it. And, you know, if, if you find that you need to do another another tier or column of squares. Yeah, just add it on. Okay, and we are almost there. And slip stitch join to that first double. And da -da! Okay, and then got my scissors here. And then I just have to sew in my ends. And yes, we just added two new fresh squares to our scarf. And I absolutely love it. By the way, this piece, uh, once I'm done sewing in these ends, yes, this piece will be on my Etsy store, um, along with some other things that I've put up recently as well. Okay. All right, my dears, so that wraps up this week's tutorial. I really hope you enjoyed it and uh, give this technique a try. Also, like I said, the uh, link to Ophelia Talks and this awesome yarn, it will be in the description box down below. By the way, this video is not sponsored, but you know, if I, if I know of a good thing and I think that this yarn is awesome, I like to tell you guys about it. All right. So that being said, until next time, you know what to do, right? I want you all to stay inspired, stay caffeinated, stay stitching, and please stay safe. Take care of yourselves and each other, and I will see you, yes you, in my next video. Bye for now, everybody, and have a great day.